if you're in med school, college, high school, or maybe you're just learning something on the side, like a language, it can be really difficult to learn a lot of new information in one go. There have been countless times that I've studied something using effective study techniques, and then weeks later I come back to it, and I'm like, whoa, what is this? I have never seen this before. And I'm probably not alone in that. I remember when I first started med school, I was so stressed out during the exam period because I felt like I was relearning everything. I felt like I had not seen most of the information that I was learning ever. And I didn't like that. I wanted to go into exams feeling like I was prepared, feeling like I had learned everything already during the semester, and I was just reviewing before I headed into the exam. And I was able to achieve that using Anki. In this video, I'm gonna get into what Anki is, why it's so effective, and I'm gonna give you my top seven tips for using Anki, which will help you ace your exams. But first, if you're into videos like this about studying and productivity, make sure to hit subscribe and the bell icon for notifications next time I release a video. Now, if you didn't know, Anki is a free flashcard app that uses space repetition and active recall. I've already made a video on active recall, which if you haven't seen, I will link right up above. But why haven't you seen it? I thought we were friends. But now, if you don't know what space repetition is, I will now explain that. So this is space repetition. The x-axis is time, and the y-axis is your knowledge in regards to a certain fact. Okay, so let's say you're a child in middle school, naive to the wonders of the universe, and your science teacher teaches you one of the most important facts that any member of society should know, that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. At that time, your knowledge of the fact is super high because you just learned it, but over time, your knowledge of it will go down, and one day you might almost forget that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, then the next day, your teacher mentions it again, and wow, you remember it once again. But over time, that memory will fade again. But then, you'll learn it again in science class the next year, and so on. Every single time you relearn a fact, just as you're about to forget it, the better it will get reinforced in your brain, and the longer and longer you will be able to remember it for. Until you get to a point where you memorize a fact for so long that it's basically just a core memory. You're never going to forget that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's just in your brain forever. So Anki takes advantage of this. If I'm using a flashcard, I don't just do it and that's it. It's gonna ask me how well I did on it. If I thought the flashcard was easy, it's gonna bring that flashcard back for me to review in a while. But if I said the card was hard, or maybe I even got it wrong, it'll bring it back for me right then and there. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, Anki uses space repetition and active recall? If I use Anki, won't I be too smart? Yes, you will be too smart. But on a serious note, Anki is such an effective way to learn information. I promise you that if you use Anki on a daily basis, as well as use the tips that I will talk about in this video, you will do so well on your exams. So my first tip is using closed deletions. If you don't know what a closed deletion is, it's a way to use fill in the blanks in your Anki cards. The basic Anki card is just front and back, question and answer. But if you use closed deletions, you can go in and choose specific words to make that a fill in the blank. I'll show you how now. So this is your basic Anki card, front and back. You'd write something like, what is the power house of the cell? And then your answer would be the mitochondria, right? Easy enough, right? You just go, and then this is what the card looks like. What is the power house of the cell? The mitochondria, easy. But now to use closed deletions, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change our basic card type to close. Type out whatever information we need to know. So the whole sentence, all right? And then, this is the magical part, you're gonna highlight the area that you wanna turn into a fill in the blank, like the mitochondria, and then you're gonna go Shift, Command, C. And it's gonna add all this random stuff to it. What this does is it turns it into a closed deletion, which is a fill in the blank. So this is what it looks like. The blank is the powers of the cell. And you're gonna do that card, it's gonna show mitochondria. And this is super useful because you can create multiple cards just based off of one piece of text. So it saves you a lot of time. So you can just go in here and create multiple cards. So now, this will create three different cards. The blank is the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria is the blank of the cell, and then the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the blank. Now, here's some bonus tips for using clothes. So if you want multiple of the fill in the blanks to show up together, so let's say you wanna say the mitochondria is the blank of the blank, what you can do is you can change these numbers here. So you change that three to a two. And that way, these two will show up together, while this one will show up separately. Additionally, you can give yourself hints. And this can be really useful if you have a card that doesn't have a lot of context. So if you want to put a hint in, what you're going to do is after the answer, you're just going to pop in two colons, and then you're going to type out whatever the hint is. So I'll write the best organelle. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. 
So in here, it shows the best organelle is the powers of the cell, so that best organelle is our hint, which is the mitochondria. And this next one, the two blanks show up together. So the mitochondria is the blank of the blank, powerhouse of the cell. Nice. Now for tip number two, try to use one word answers. Or if you can't do one word answers, try to limit them to maybe a short sentence. So this is a card I made a couple of years ago. On the front, you just have the three stages of your analysis. And on the back, this is what you have. This is a really good example of how not to make an Anki card. When you see a card like that, and you have so much stuff to recall in one go, it can be really discouraging and mentally exhausting, which makes it much less enjoyable to study. Now let's say you have a really long card, and you do that card, and you get some of it right, but you get some of it wrong. If you say that you answer that card correctly, you're going to skip over that stuff that you didn't know so well. But if you say that you answer that card incorrectly, you're going to be reviewing that stuff that you did know well too often. And the best way is just to break that up into a bunch of smaller cards. I know that means you're going to have more cards to do and it might seem like a bigger number, but you'll be doing those cards at a much faster pace and you'll actually save a lot of time when you make more cards like that. So I pulled up one of my lecture slides here just to show you something that I would have made a terrible card on a couple of years ago and then how I would change that to make a good card on it now. So this is the causes of pancreatitis with the, one of the more interesting mnemonics, I get smashed, and for each letter there's a cause of pancreatitis. So what I would have done a couple of years ago is I would have just copy and pasted all of this and I would have closed out all of this into one card and just made it one huge card, recite all the causes of pancreatitis. What I would do now is I would go through and actually close out each individual cause. So I'm making one card for each part of the mnemonic. So now you're probably thinking, this probably isn't the greatest card because it gives you the mnemonic and you're not gonna have that mnemonic on your exam. And that's totally right. So what I would do is I would add this card and then I would add another card afterwards saying mnemonic for causes of pancreatitis. And then you could just write what the mnemonic is. And that way you have one card helping you to remember the mnemonic and another card helping you to remember each little bit of the mnemonic. So now for tip number three, that is gonna be to use add-ons. So Anki is an open source application, which means anyone can go in there, write things and change the application to their liking. So some people much, much smarter than myself have actually gone and done this. So you can change your background. There's add-ons where it'll show you a picture of a cat every 10 cards just to keep you motivated, things like that. Now you can install each of the add-ons individually, but what I recommend is using the Onking add-on pack. The Onking is a YouTuber who does videos about Anki. I'll link his video down below on how to install his add-on pack. It'll include 40 add-ons in one go. It takes probably about 30 seconds. I highly recommend it. Now for tip number four, this is going to be using the berry feature. Is it berry or berry? Berry. 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 It's going to be using the berry feature. Sometimes you're doing your Anki cards. Maybe you're tired. You just zone out a little bit and you hit spacebar before you actually answer the question. Then you see the answer and you're like, ah, I know that. And the answer is good and move on with your life. Now, that's wrong for a couple of reasons. One is you might have not actually known the answer. It's easy to trick yourself into thinking that you knew something when maybe you didn't. Secondly, doing that negates the whole active recall part of Anki. Just reading the answer is a passive way of learning. But if you answer that question before you see the answer, then you're flexing those brain muscles and really learning that information. So what you're gonna do is this. So I see the card. I actually get a peek at the answer and you're just gonna hit the dash button and that's gonna bury the card. What that means is that it's gonna bring the card back to you tomorrow and then that way, hopefully you're a little bit more focused, you're less tired and you'll get a chance to do that card again. So that's a card you've been doing for a while and it comes back every month or so. It won't mess with the timing. It'll still, if you get it right, show up after another month. Now the next tip is to use pre-made decks when possible. It doesn't apply to everyone, but you'll quickly find that making Anki cards is the most time consuming part of doing this whole process. Now, making Anki cards is a really useful part of the learning process. So if you do have time, I do recommend doing it. But using pre-made cards can be really useful if you're in a course that's really busy and you don't have a lot of time. Like I found myself when I was in my second year of med school. Was I busy or was I just lazy? Now, usually pre-made decks will be made based on a specific resource. So for medicine, I use the Onking decks, which I will link below. And some of the cards in that deck are based off of my pathology textbook. So I'll read out of my pathology textbook and then activate the corresponding cards for that area of the textbook that I just read. So I use the resource and then I use the pre-made cards instead of having to go through and make my own cards. It saves a lot of time if you're busy. Now this next tip is a quick one and it's not as much about making cards, but just to say that you should do your Anki cards every single day. If you're not doing your cards every single day, the review cards that build up can become very overwhelming. So doing them every single day will help to keep your workload down and make Anki a much more enjoyable experience. But now you're probably saying, but Joe, what about my days off? Should I do my Anki cards then? What about my sanity? What about burnout? And to that I would say, stop asking so many questions, okay? 
But seriously, the way that I think of it is that doing your daily cards should only take you somewhere between 20 minutes and an hour if you're really focused. If you can sacrifice a little bit of that time on your day off, then you have a lot less to do when you come back from that time off. I mean, it's really up to you, but personally, I'd rather do a bit of work on Saturday and Sunday so that when I come back on Monday, I'm not absolutely swamped. Now this last tip is if you're just starting to use Anki. I know when you start out with Anki, you can go in, make a trillion cards, and then now you have a thousand new cards every day, and a thousand review cards, and that just builds up and builds up because you're not doing them every single day, and that gets so overwhelming. And then you're just like, screw this. I'm not doing Anki anymore. I'm dropping out of school. I'm done with all of this. What I would say is this. If you do Anki perfectly and do it every single day and follow everything I've been talking about, you'll get an amazing grade. So that means if you're not doing it perfectly, if you're just doing it all right, you'll still get a very good grade. So be kind to yourself when you're starting off. I know when I first started using Anki, I got very overwhelmed because I had thousands of review cards building up. But it takes practice and it takes time and you'll become more efficient at making your cards and you'll become more efficient at doing your cards. So just keep at it, don't give up. The important thing is just to commit and stick to it. And that's the last tip, guys. I promise you that if you follow all of these tips and actually do Anki on a daily basis, you will see the results. It is a fantastic way to learn tons of new information and make the information really stick. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications next time I release a video. And I will catch you guys on the flippy flip. When I told my friend Mariam about starting a YouTube channel, she jokingly said, oh, is it just gonna be about Anki and bikes? And yeah, it's, it's just been about Anki and bikes.